Okay, everybody, it is uh, number four. Let's see. First of all, I just realized, you like these cups? Does that look really salty or what? Um, it is. I've had those for a long time. I'm getting really wild here. I'm having some polar diet root beer. I want to. So I'm thinking uh, I'm hoping to keep this down to about 20 minutes today because it snowed last night and although it snowed I did get the driveway plowed or shoveled or snow blowed. We had a, we get about seven inches up here in um, uh, Pushaw Lake. Um, and that was, that was enough for me. Mmm. We'll put that over there. I'm starting to realize that this is a, this is the list of all your names here. And I'm starting to realize as I'm giving assignments, it's going to be easier if I have this just in writing. So I've got everybody's name here all the way down from uh, starting with Alex. And by the way, Thank you for that uh, information you sent to me earlier, Alex. And uh, all the way down to Jaden. Not Caden, but Jaden. White. All right. So we got that done. We're still in the chapter in the book about uh, stern sections. And so let's get going on that. I'm going to switch right over to the PowerPoint. And let's see if we can get over there. So we started here. Or this is where we're going to start. And if we come up here, this was where we were talking about the, um, uh, this is where we were talking about either cast or fabricated stern frames. Brian had asked about uh, which was better, and I just sent you a long discussion, and I, I, got, I got a little bit long-winded in there. So go ahead and check that discussion point out on, the, on Canvas, and I got talking about what are my, my thoughts on cast or fabricated? And uh, I think we'll spend a little bit of time. I'd like some feedback from, uh, from you of, of what I presented there. So uh, here's a cast uh, frame. Here's a fabricated frame. It's made from, as you can see, it's made from s smaller parts. Uh, here, you know, uh, let's see. This area of a... Um, fabricated stern frame, sorry for the pause there. Uh, it's called the sole piece number seven right here. And I'm going to show it to you up here as well. And then over here, that's all number seven. And even on a fabricated stern frame, that sole piece is very, very often it would be, it would be cast. It would be a small part only a little bit, only maybe from, you know, from here to here, because it's complex enough that it might need to be cast. Uh, that's a real small point. All right. So now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about rudders. And we see a couple of pictures here. And the, uh, we, you know, look, look at the size of those guys here. So we're looking at this and um, <laughs> there's one guy with his head in here. Here's another guy with his head on this one. Uh, another one got a green helmet on, so that's going to be the safety foreman with the green with the green helmet. Notice that a couple of things are going on with this this rudder, which is probably, gosh, you know, figuring that these these people here are maybe five or six feet tall. You know, um, I would estimate that's 20 feet, maybe even more from here to all the way down here. That's pretty, that's pretty uh, sizable rudder. It does have an inspection port, a gasketed hatch. It could be removed and you could get access to the inside. So it is a hollow structure. Um, the other thing I want you to notice that this is where, where this guy's putting his head in, where this guy's putting his head in. That would be that where the, um, the rudder post came up through this collar. And from right where I'm pointing right now, that would come all the way up through and extend up so the rudder post would be right about, you know, to there. 
The other thing we want to look at, this is a fabricated um, stern frame. This is what the rudder is hung on. The stern frame encompasses the pintles and the gudgeons. This rudder, as we see it, look at the fit and finish. That's a way of describing how nicely it goes together. There's not a big gaps on there. There's not, there's not space for turbulence to occur. All, the, all really good stuff. Look how just nice and fair that corner is, how smooth. Um, that, that's a really important thing. Um, for the, Remember the first thing I said in, in the previous lecture uh, from number three was, let's see, that the flow of water into and away from the propeller is of utmost importance. And that has to do with efficiency. So, you know, we don't want to increase any extra turbulence in this here. And many, much the same way as that, you know, uh, vehicles, cars are, you know, they are created so that you get a minimum turbulence and wind resistance. We would do the same thing with the underwater portion of the ship. On the other hand, look at this beast. So here we've got an uh, old school ship. It's uh, sitting rather high in the water. We see, we see the propellers here and the blades of the propeller. Um, it's a, it is a welded construction, so it's not that. It's not too, too old, but it's probably, you know, in the 70s, maybe in the 60s, and possibly even in the, in the 50s. Uh, we see the draft marks here. These are... Uh, these are measured draft in feet. Here's the rudder post comes down. There's the, this is the pintle that I'm on now. There's the gudgeon, uh, as we just talked about. But just look how sort of rough and lumpy this is. And everywhere that you've got these little protrusions and these little things here, here and here and here, and these bolts, all of that is going to cause a little bit of extra uh, turbulence. And so that that really wasn't thought of back in, in those days and, and to the degree that it is now. Let's go back to the textbook and we'll look at some rudders and um, give yourself a chance to um, think about what you're looking at here. Here's the key right here. This is the rudder with a cast frame. So this one here is a rudder with the sort of the guts or the skeletal structure inside the rudder that that could be all cast. This one over on the other side, this would be a fabricated, this would be fabricated, built up of small pieces. All right, so just like the stern frame itself, the rudder could be the inside, the body, the, the skeletal structure of the um, of the rudder could be built in a cast steel or fabricated steel. So study those. Uh, read about those in the text. Um, this view here is showing sort of the, the, uh, the top-down view. You see where it says section AA right there? Put my cursor right on it. It says section AA. If you look carefully, you'll see this line, which is here, it says A, comes all the way over here. And that's meant to show you on a uh, detailed drawing like this, it's meant to show you where that slice, that bird's eye view slice was taken off that rudder. So it shows you that teardrop shape. And again, that's almost like a, a wing of an aircraft. You think about how the wing of an aircraft works, I think, and I hope, that you all understand that, how an aircraft stays uh, in flight with um, high pressure and low pressure uh, areas around the wing. In a very similar way, and we'll talk about this in, in uh, ship handling in future years, in the very same way, uh, rudder acts with high pressures and low pressure areas around it as the ship is turning. Here's another little interesting thing. Right down here, we're showing the view of something called a drain plug. I told you that the uh, it is hollow. Um, so that means that water could get in there. And if you went into the shipyard and you needed to drain that out, 
there would be a possibility of getting into the drain plug, drain plug and pulling that plug and letting it go out. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So here are th some different examples of a spade type rudder. Now a spade type rudder is something which is not supported at the bottom. And it's very likely that you've talked about this in other places, but a spade type rudder, as you can see, the stern frame doesn't, in, in e any of these three examples, it doesn't come out and support. What's, what I want you to know is that there are balanced rudders, semi-balanced rudders, and unbalanced rudders, and it depends on where the rudder post is. So if you've got a roughly, and very close to it, but roughly, it doesn't have to be, you know, 50-50, but, but let's say that the, there's as much material forward of the rudder post as, so that would be here, and there's as much material aft, there's a much, as much rudder aft of the rudder post, so that would be balanced. Here's semi-balanced. Well, it's significantly, you can see it, it's obvious, there's not as much mass or material forward of the rudder, or the rudder post, or as is aft. And then the third type, it's being hung right here, and that's called an unbalanced rudder. Everything is aft of the rudder post. Okay. So make sure you know, again, that's balanced, semi-balanced, and unbalanced. Well, this picture shows, and again, we're in chapter 21 of the textbook. Uh, this picture shows the rudder post coming up into the steering gear room. So... Remember we talked uh, in the last lecture, I was talking about the rudder trunk. So here's a picture of the rudder trunk. You know, here's a side view. And so this, and here's the rudder post right in the middle of it. And it comes down and it connects to the rudder, which is, looks like it would probably be a spade type rudder, but that doesn't matter at this point. Now, we have to have some way so that the waves don't slosh up through this uh, trunk because the trunk is open at the bottom. Whether or not it's um, one deck or here it's got two levels so we have an we have an extra space here and probably the steering gear room would be up here. And notice it says separate carrier and stuffing box. So there's the carrier bearing and here's the stuffing box which keeps and the word stuffing box is Kind of, kind of like the uh, gaskets on a valve stem that you learned about in NS, rather, EG 101. And that's the, that's the stuffing box, much like the, uh, the gasket material around a valve stem. There's two things here. Mostly uh, on this one here, um, they're separate. On this one here, the, uh, the uh, rudder carrier and the stuffing box are all put together. And this, where my cursor is, would be where the, the steering gear would be found. And here's some, some rather detailed schematics. You can see right here it says six coils of packing and kind of study that a little bit. And um, here's a combined, so this is a cutaway view of what would be over here. And here they are when they are combined. Okay, so check that out. Let's go on and let's um, let's look at some real pictures. Well, this is an interesting rudder. Now I've I've used that term fit and finish just uh, a few moments ago. So this is pretty interesting. A clearly, uh, clearly modern ship, uh, big ship, uh, in a shipyard. I don't know if that's a graving dock or if it's a uh, floating dry dock, um, but. Probably a new ship. Don't know if it's brand new or if it's just in for a, a new uh, paint job. Uh, let's see. This is really interesting around the rudder itself. It's very hard to tell if this is balanced or semi-balanced rudder. I'm going to guess it's a semi-balanced rudder. I kind of feel that's right about where the pivot point of where the, uh, the rudder's turning around its rudder post. But this is a... Uh, kind of an interesting thing here. Kind of reminds me like the um, stern part of a bulbous bow. You know that? 
So it's like a bulbous bow on the rudder. It's going to change the flow of water around the rudder surface. It's going to decrease the turbulence. And that's why something like that would be done. Okay, now, some of you want to know if this is a, a controllable pitch propeller or if it, if it is, uh, or if those blades are just bolted in place. I can't actually tell you. I don't know. I can't, I can't detect from this picture and I don't have a reference to be able to tell. Uh, I would say this, the greater part of me would believe that those are just uh, bolted on there and that's a fixed pitch. It is not a controllable pitch propeller. Here's another view. Now, this is, a, again, it's a spade type rudder. Um, you can see how it's kind of like the one that, that had the, 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 uh, the first picture we looked at where you had that open inspection port over on the side, but you see how it's hung here. We can see that the, uh, the pintle would, you would can't really see the pintle, and then behind here would be where the gudgeon was. Uh, this, this is kind of an interesting uh, propeller blade. And do you remember, let me, if I was in class now, I'd say to you, uh, I'd say, uh, hey, uh, who can remember the name of this area right here? I'm gonna go back and look at my list of students. So, you know, I'd say, hey, Grayson, what's that called? Or I'd say, uh, Jamal, hey, what's that called? Or I'd say, uh, Sam or Natalie, and I would say, you know, Chase, what's that called? So who would get that? That's called the aperture, that area that the propeller works in. Well, this propeller in particular is known as a highly skewed propeller. Skewed, S-K-E-W-E-D. And it's a very, very particular shape on a propeller. It is mostly effective at going ahead and it's not so good at going astern. But since its ship mostly goes ahead, it was a design feature that said, you know, the naval architects and the owners said, look, we want to do this. You wouldn't see a propeller like this on a tugboat that was doing ship docking. This is for a vessel, a cargo vessel or a tanker, which spends 99.5% of its life in um, ahead revolutions on its propeller. Look carefully what it says here. It says stern tubes. So the stern tube, stern tube is that part of the ship where the shaft goes through from the inside, goes through to the outside. The stern tube has to have um, really two primary things that it needs to do. It needs to support from, you know, from around or, or underneath the shaft. The shaft is obviously heavy steel and it has to support it. It has to support it evenly. It has to allow it to rotate, but it has to keep the water from rushing. Remember the propeller, the shaft is where it comes out of the ship. At the rear of the ship, it's going to be obviously underwater. So it has to keep, um, has to keep the water out. There are two, um, primary methods for doing that, something called water lubricated or oil lubricated. Water lubricated stern tube, and we're talking about having a piece of steel which is spinning inside this tube. There is, it's, it's not just free floating, it has to be touching something, and um, there's gonna be lubrication. Well, sometimes that's oil. Now, if that's oil, we have to keep the oil from going out, getting outside, there has to be an oil seal. And you'll notice on this lower one, this lower one is an oil lubricated or oil, uh, exactly, it's an oil lubricated stern seal. And you'll see there's an oil seal, seal here and an oil seal up here. And there's a pump which supplies and circulates this oil into that area. On the other hand, on this upper one, there is no oil involved. There is a slow seepage of water. You will see that this thing, see where, right where I'm pointing now, it says seawater uh, cock for controlling, and that would be a small valve. You could control 
the flow of seawater into that space. So it's not seeping in necessarily from the backside. Uh, really small boats will sometimes just use a, a very simple like this, but this seawater is controlled and fed, but it's just nothing but salt water into that area. So it acts as the, as the lubricant on the shaft. It's not a great shot, but it's, uh, it, it kind of shows you uh, where I'm pointing now. Here's the shaft bearings. So here's the propeller shaft coming out uh, all the way to till the end. Here's the propeller aperture. Let's see, intermediate shaft bearings. If you're on the state of Maine and you go into Shaft Alley, you'll see that periodically every, every number of feet the shaft has to be supported. Bearings is a word that just uh, carries the load and allows rotation. Um, here is the forward stern tube seals. There's the aft stern tube seal. So the stern tube is very, very long. And this would be the after peak bulkhead here. This would be what you're pointing at. It's not labeled, but where I'm showing you. And it would extend up through. I would expect it to extend up through, and that is the after peak bulkhead. Here is a stern tube being manufactured for quite a large ship. This is a lathe, as you would use in a machine shop, but a really, really big, uh, big lathe. And um, you can see how, let me say this, obviously that has to be machined to a very precise standard. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of akin to, um, or what I mean by that, it's kind of similar to if you're machining the end, the, you know, uh, inside of a, uh, inside of a, um, any device, you know, a piston or a cylinder on a internal combustion engine, that has to be pretty, pretty precise. And so the same thing because of the rotation of the shaft. So the stern seal, that's not the propeller shaft coming through, by the way. That's just the, uh, the milling device as part of the lathe. Okay, so, so again, we're back to the stern of the ship. We see the propeller shaft now right over here. You, the uh, the shaft it looks like they're either pulling the shaft or they are putting it back in. You can see it's supported by a lot of chain hoists, um, and there's some there's some uh, clips here on the ship which are designed to be able to connect in a pad a uh, to be able to connect in a, cha a chain hoist and uh, to be able to to get a good grip and to lift this and support it as you extract the shaft. But this is uh, just another view of, um, of uh, a shipyard work going on in the process. We're getting real close to the end here. So these are called bossings or A brackets. And sometimes I'm gonna add a different term. It's called a spectacle flange. Bossings or A bracket or sometimes called a spectacle friend, uh, uh, spectacle uh, frame. Well, this would be a situation where you would anticipate having a twin screw vessel. You know, if, if, the, if the single screw vessel, the shaft is coming out, it comes out right through dead center, through the stern frame, it's pretty much supported nicely. So this type of stuff is where you have to support um, a shaft which would come through, uh, it would come through here or come through here or on this one it comes through here or even, I see where it says propeller shaft there. And so it has to be supported because now you got two, uh, two shafts coming out the port and starboard shaft, you get a twin screw vessel. It might be more helpful if we show it to you like this. Well, so there's, there's one there. There's actually a laser light on that one. And uh, this is just a very general term of shaft brackets. This one, it, it, is, it is on the center line, but it's a singular one. And so these would be shaft brackets which were designed to be when you were using a twin screw vessel. Now, I think you should know and start to learn, uh, certainly, uh, you see the word says boss, and you see where it says boss cap. I want you to know those terms, the bossing. So that's the end of the propeller shaft where the, 
The propeller boss is where the blades are attached to that, whether or not they're molded in and created or they're bolted on. And on the very, very tip, this is the called the boss cap. There's some other stuff here. We've got the propeller shaft and the leading edge and the tip and the trailing edge, the face. I'm not going to get you on those. We might get you on those in, in ship handling down the road. But for right now, know the word boss and know the word boss cap. I'm going to go back to, um, let's see. So here's a propeller boss. I can't really see if there's a boss cap. And that might be considered right there. There's the boss cap but this would be the boss. And looking very, very carefully, really squint your eyes here, right where I'm pointing, That's you can almost see where there's a flattened area where you would be attaching the, um, the blades to. Let's go up here. So we can just see there's, the, there's the, uh, the boss cap here on the very end. And let's go back to even to this view here. So this is the propeller boss. And uh, this one's unique, and there's the boss cap there. So we're going to go back to where we started here. Let's see. Now here's a here's a list because this is what's coming out. You're all submitting your your uh, four inch structure drawings, and I probably got you know ten of like. In fact, I've had emails come in as I've been uh, preparing this lecture. I'm getting the dings from my from my email. But this is the list of stuff that we're going to do uh, for the aft end structure. Now, I know that's more than we put in my drawing yesterday. That was the first drawing. So there's your list of all the things that are going to be in there. So you're ready for this? So there's my drawing done up to the, I'm going to use a term maybe some of you don't know, done up to the nth degree. And that's got all the stuff. What I'm going to be looking for um, as an assignment, probably next week, this will be the one after the bow structure. You're all turning in the bow structure this week, and this is going to be for next week. Um, I'm going to want to see something that looks like this. And I'll send that out to you so that you have the full view. You know, nicely done, nicely lettered so on and so forth, colorized, you know, don't overdo the colorization. That's not, that's not, doesn't get you any prizes, but that's what it should look like. And when you do your final exam, it's going to look something like this. You will know the parts of a ship. I think you're starting to realize that. So I think I'm all done. I'm just at 27 minutes, 47 seconds. I'm going to say goodbye from, uh, from Studio Pusha and, um, There'll be another one. There'll be another le uh, lecture up on Friday. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye bye.